Well, Wakanda Forever is a certified hit, but as many of you know, there was a completely different version of the movie in the works before the tragic death of Chadwick Boseman. Now, director Ryan Coogler has revealed some very interesting details about the original version of the movie. Let's take a couple minutes to dive into the original script and how this would have had T'Challa on a very different path. As many of you know, the version of Black Panther Wakanda Forever we got was a huge hit with fans, but this other version that Ryan Coogler initially wrote sounds pretty interesting. Now, before we dive into that, I wanted to make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of our Wakandan updates. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of news headed our way soon. Well, as many of you know, the Black Panther sequel screenplay was pretty much complete before the death of Chadwick Boseman. Apparently, Ryan Coogler and Joe Robert Cole, who wrote the script, had no idea how sick Boseman was at the time, and he had penned a story revolving around T'Challa that, until now, had been pretty much a mystery to fans. Now, after Boseman's death, the decision was made to rewrite the script, and while many elements remained, such as Namor, the story ended up becoming one about grief and Shuri's journey to inherit the Black Panther mantle. Now recently, Ryan Coogler was talking to the New York Times and he revealed what this original film looked like and I have to say it's pretty interesting. So let's break down all the details that Coogler provided. Now, according to Ryan, the film would have picked up following the hero after the events of Avengers Endgame but jumping a few years into the future to tell the story about T'Challa and his son, Tassant. Now, we actually met Tassant in Wakanda Forever, but apparently he would have had a huge role in this film, and the whole movie was going to be from his perspective. In the article, Coogler actually says, It was, what are we going to do about the blip? That was the challenge. It was absolutely nothing like we made. It was going to be a father-son story from the perspective of a father because the first movie had been a father story perspective from the sons. In the script, T'Challa was a dad who had this forced five-year absence from his son's life. The first scene was an animated sequence. You hear Nakia talking to Tassant. She says, tell me what you know about your father. You realize he doesn't know his dad was a Black Panther. He never met him and Nakia is remarried to a Haitian dude. Then we cut to reality, and it's the night that everybody comes back from the blip. You see T'Challa meet the kid for the first time. Then it cuts ahead three years, and he's essentially co-parenting. We had some crazy scenes in there for Chad, man. Our code name for the movie was Summer Break, and the movie was about a summer that the kid spends with his dad. For his eighth birthday, they do a ritual where they go out to the bush and they live off the land. But something happens and T'Challa has to go save the world with his son on his hip. That was the movie. Now, I'm pretty sure that something would have been Namor. But it does sound like this version of Black Panther Wakanda Forever was going to be pretty interesting. Now, he did make it pretty clear there was going to be a bit more going on in this story than we ultimately got. Revealing that Valentina Allegra de Fontaine had a much bigger role alongside the main antagonist, the Talakoan King. In the article, he went on to say, it was a combination. Val was much more active. It was basically a three-way conflict between Wakanda, the U.S., and Talakan. But it was all mostly from the child's perspective. Now, given what Ryan Coogler brought us in both movies, I have to say, this might have been a really great film. And I totally love the connection between the first film and the second film. All in all, the recovery after Chadwick Boseman's death was still pretty good. But I have to say, I would have loved to have seen this take on the film. I also found it interesting that the child was almost 8 years old. Makes me wonder why they didn't age him up a couple of years in this movie? Putting him closer to the 10 year mark would have made it easier for him to inherit the mantle much sooner. Obviously, young T'Challa is going to take up the mantle of Black Panther in the future, but seeing him train, learn, and become a man beside his father in this kind of movie would have been really interesting, and it's added to the list of the many tragedies of losing Chadwick Boseman so soon. Now, currently, Black Panther Wakanda Forever sits at about $800 million, and it's still dominating some of the box office weekends. I suspect the film will get to about the $850 million mark before it's done, we're expecting the next Ant-Man franchise soon, so that definitely will be the end date for it. But Ryan Coogler has another huge success on his hands, and I don't think we've seen the last of him in the MCU. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of rumors he could be the director for Secret Wars. That hasn't been confirmed yet, but I think he would be an excellent choice. Now, I'm really curious on what you guys think of this version of Wakanda Forever. It's obviously quite a different take on what we got, but it clearly would have still been a very emotional tale. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you get all of the Wakanda news. But until we know more, 
make sure you sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you hit like, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Peace.